first top flight action of 2006, but the crowd is well and truly up for it, a packed house. No surprise to see that here at the Hawthorns for one of the oldest and most traditional derby fixtures in the land. Brian Robson rings the changes again following defeat at Anfield last time out. There are four in total as he reverts to what is looking like a home 11. Carnu and Ellington return up front, as do Jonathan Greening and Diamancy Camera in midfield. No real surprise to see Thomas Kushak keep his place in goal after his Anfield heroics. But both Ronnie Woolwork and Yunichi Inamoto are still missing with injury. A boost for David O'Leary as he gets his captain back. Olaf Melberg picked up a hamstring injury against Bolton last month. He's missed the whole Christmas programme so far, but returns in place of Liam Ridgewell at the back. But as one returns, so another drops out. Thomas Sorensen has a virus, so Stuart Taylor comes in for only his second start for Aston Villa. Other than that, it's the same starting eleven that frustrated Arsenal two days ago. Luke Moore keeping Juan Pablo Angel on the bench. 2-1 all draws when these two met last season but two red cards in the last meeting that was at Villa Park Jonathan Greening was one of those he's back in the starting lineup this afternoon although Liam Ridgewell with whom he had the little ruckus starts on the bench for Aston Villa a rare outing for Stuart Taylor left Arsenal looking to get first team football but this is only his second premiership start very much an understudy to Thomas, Thomas Sorensen who's on his sick bed this afternoon well, he should know. He's been in good form recently and saw off a former North London rival. Got both goals here in the impressive win against Tottenham Hotspur. Could be an important return for Aston Villa. Olaf Melberg, the captain, back in their starting lineup. He was on target here for Aston Villa last season, very early on. But Albion fought back to claim a one-all draw. At Villa Park back in April when those two players were dismissed, Ridgewell and Greening, that was the man in charge. Rob Styles again will officiate over this 151st competitive meeting between West Bromwich Albion and Aston Villa. Not the biggest distance between Villa Park and here at the Hawthorns and David O'Leary and Brian Robson with a word for each other before kick-off Nigel Pearson as well with a warm festive greeting for the Aston Villa manager Roy Aitken to David O'Leary's number two all the formalities are over and now we can get off and underway one of the oldest fixtures in the land this particular West Midlands derby it might lack the venom of Villa against Birmingham or even West Bromwich Albion against Wolves but there's plenty at stake here on a chilly afternoon in the Hawthorns Curtis Davis who's been so impressive in the way he's taken to his defensive role since his switch at the start of the season from Luton three points between these two sides if Albion get a good win here they could go above Aston Villa that is their aim, Villa looking to continue what has been a pretty good festive programme. Great win over Everton. They fought back from behind three times at Fulham to get an eventful 3 all draw. A couple of goals from Liam Ridgewell, who's among the substitutes today. And a goalless draw against Arsenal last time out. Delaney. Forward by the Welshman again. The first really strong challenge takes place. It's Neil Clement with a statement of intent early on. Well, I'm surprised that Rob Styles just stood two yards away from the action there. That's a brand the yellow card. That was quite a reckless challenge coming in from the West Brom captain Neil Clement. Delaney will take the resulting free kick. 
looking for Backer, who was the man fouled, he's found more, but he's hitched a little ride on the way. He's so good in the air, Backer, and he gets up above Albrechtson, and he's a little surprised, as I am, that a foul was given against him. But both teams come into the game today in confident mood, despite the occupying a very lowly position in the Premiership. West Brom have been so incisive at home, wins against Man City and Spurs and Aston Villa. They've just started now to show a little bit more consistency that their supporters demand. History is on their side in this fixture as well. Four of the last five meetings have been drawn, but Villa unbeaten in the last eight. And here they come, this is a good run forward by Davis. He's found more. Davis just did enough, Curtis that is, to frustrate Aston Villa. Thomas Kushak, the young pole in goal for Albion again and despite ending up on the losing side pulled off some vastly impressive saves up at Anfield to uh, keep the game alive before Peter Crouch got the winner for Liverpool who are in such good form at the moment in the Barclays Premiership and Albion's home form has been formidable they've taken 13 points out of a possible last 18 and it's quite clear that Brian Robson sees the home form as the way of Premiership salvation hovering just above the drop zone but in a much much better position than they were this time 12 months ago when of course they pulled off what was until then the impossible bottom at Christmas but surviving on that final dramatic survival Sunday here's Milner continuing his new role on the left of midfield for Villa it's a little interesting note there Bill that tussle between Carnu and Melberg the free kick was actually given by the assistant referee and uh, he brought it to the attention of Rob Styles. and Rob Styles just had a little word with him afterwards and you could read his lips, it was, I'll make those decisions. Camera, lovely give and go with Cardo, it's Camera's cross, great chance! Just wide from Greening though. Excellent work there from West Brom, lovely little one-two between Camera and Carnu, the ball is played with pace. Carnu obviously not in the box, just a one forward in there. Jonathan Greening comes in at the back post. He actually tries to score with the outstretched right foot. Possibly would have been easier with his left, but he he feels more confident with the right foot. But he was inches away from giving West Brom the opening goal. 27 years old today, Jonathan Greening, and so close to living the packed house here at the Hawthorns. A real early present in 2006. Here's Milan Barros now. Villa menacing. This is a lively start. Davis coming in. But it was just a little bit too high for the impressive young man from Northern Ireland. Now Greening pressed into defensive mode. Carnick. Wonderful languid control from the big Nigerian. Albrechtson and strongly on Barry. That's the Dane who has come off second best. Once again, Rob Styles, very lenient in the early part of this game. Obviously, taking into consideration this is a big local derby. It was a late challenge from Gareth Barry on Albrechtson, but no more than a free kick given. This is the challenge. for Albrechtson, Carnu glancing on, looking for his strike partner Nathan Ellington. And pressure by Moore. Kushak off balance, forced to take a safety first approach to make sure it got out of play. is the target, it's away by Davis, now Diamantzi camera, 
Loftus possessed by Melberg. That's good referee from Rob Styles. Quite clearly a little pull of the shirt from camera on Melberg. And Rob Styles trying to give Melberg the advantage. And once Melberg had messed up his cross, he quickly gave the free kick to Aston Villa. It's the sort of decision that uh, players really do appreciate. And we'd like to see a lot more of that in the game. James Milner will look to deliver. Melberg and Backer both strong in the air. Collected comfortably enough by Thomas Kushak. Chris Kirkland on the bench, there's no doubt he is the number one in these parts at the moment. This is his 11th consecutive Premiership start. Festive period, not quite so profitable for Albion. Three defeats in their last four games. It was a very tricky, festive fixture list that they had to contend with. It would have been a big surprise if they had come away from Old Trafford or Liverpool with anything and uh, it proved to be in vain. The trips up there in terms of points accumulation. Here's Milner. Albrechtson slid in. Backer in support. Milner tried some trickery, but Watson wasn't fooled against his former club. Of course, spent a couple of years at Villa Park, Steve Watson. Davis and Greening now gives Robinson a chase but a forlorn one just too much pace on the pass and with this congested Christmas schedule that's the fourth game in the space of eight days for these clubs there's slightly more space for rotation in the Albion squad than in Villas they fair share of injuries at the moment Larson, Samuel, Phillips, Jemba Jemba have all been out recently Lee Hendry, Patrick Berger and Wilfred Baumer are still on the treatment table for David O'Leary's side David O'Leary feeling that uh, the festive programme has hit his squad harder than most well you wouldn't know it so much from the results Barry up against Kanu it was a frustrated challenge from the big Nigerian For Villa. Greening. Good work by Jonathan Greening. Ellington and Carnu await in the centre. Here's Carter. Fancies a shot at goal, but that will only give catching practice to the Villa fans behind Stuart Taylor's goal. He just knew that as soon as he got it under control, he was going to look for the shot. Greening, good play. Delaney dived in and Greening takes advantage releases Carter and despite the fact that he's being closed down should have done a little better with a shot he scored a real spectacular here in the win against Arsenal knows all about derbies in this part of the world the former Birmingham City player made the switch uh, across England's second city in the summer Milner now finds Moore still Luke Moore and Albertson forced to concede a corner Villa's first corner Lance 
danced away. And Ellington can complete the clearance. It's a proud defensive record that Albion have at home. Unbeaten in their last four games and they haven't conceded since Alan Shearer scored here in Newcastle's 3-0 win. That was back at the end of October. Helped on by Ellington. Greening. Chase for camera, and he's got a wonderful goal here as part of that good run at the Hawthorns against Manchester City. Robinson. Saw the congestion, the traffic in front of him, decided that uh, the way forward was to go back. Good crossing by Villa. And this is Davis. Neatly brought down. Backer. Aaron Hughes. And away in no uncertain terms by Curtis Davis. Backer, who's in his final month of his loan spell from Leeds United be one of the items on David O'Leary's agenda for this coming month the transfer window now open of course there'll be plenty of rumour wheeling dealing from all sorts of clubs and this takeover bid still hanging over Aston Villa very much whether that comes to fruition may well materialise in the coming weeks meantime this is camera for Albion Ellington Darren Carter Carnu. Still Kanu, this is wonderful work. And denied at the last, but so close to opening the door. Every time Kanu gets on the ball, it spells danger for the opposition. Brilliant close control. And it took two players recognising the danger was there. They dived in to block the shot from Kanu. a little bit late on his former club mate but uh, Barry quick to pick himself up he's been playing the majority of the season in that left midfield role but uh, desperate times and all that in terms of the Villa injuries means he's uh, back at left back it's Barry who will take this Melberg is forward and Rosewell teams who've tinkered with their formations particularly home and away this season but uh, it's pretty much like against like here with 4-4-2 against 4-4-2 plenty of individual battles that's McCann looking to find Luke Moore I think West Brom would like to try and get the ball a little bit more often to camera on the right hand side he's got outstanding pace and playing against Gareth Barry, who you mentioned, hasn't been playing that often as a recognised left back. Has played there, of course, in his career. But at the moment, he just can't seem to get enough of the ball to him. As I speak, he's now got it. Let's see what he can do. It's a good start from camera. But not the best finish. No, well, the actual dribble was better than the cross.
goes past Gareth Barry quite easy under no real pressure should have delivered a better cross the sense it was one of those where he was looking for the whip on the ball to try and pick out Nathan Ellington in the penalty area but just got too much power and a slip in front of the dugouts by Bernard Baker the referee's assistant a little bit of festive cheer for the Hawthorns crowd and plenty of amusement for the Villa bench as well Kanu looking to combine again Barry read the situation and just about had the pace to keep up with the live wire camera you can see what their strategy is now can't you West Brom every time they get it to Kanu he's looking to try and use the pace of camera we saw an early little one-two in the first couple of minutes the broader effort from grinning at the far post but that's where they're going to try and concentrate on that's where they feel they can make inroads into Aston Villa's back four the best effort we've had so far in the uh, opening 19 minutes or so Jonathan Greening sliding in at the far post but the birthday boy unable to apply the finish Kanu away by Melberg only as far as camera Darren Carter I fancy another shot rather telegraphed it though and Backer able to block is the only Villa player inside the Albion half now Milner Barros and Moore almost getting in each other's way both making identical runs and that was certainly something of a help to Albion as they look to remedy the situation it's Villa who play on with Barros down at the moment well, they were spoiled for options there weren't they Aston Villa the actual pass, I think it was from Milner, just lacked a little bit of pace. But there were two players wanting to take possession. And because there wasn't just enough pace, it gave Davis the chance to get back and get his right foot there to deny Barrash a clear run on goal. And I think in taking the ball, he possibly got a little bit of contact also with Barrash's right ankle. And it's been him plus one in terms of the uh, strikers recently more currently in the hot seat and it's Juan Pablo Angel who warms the seat on the bench this is the 11th consecutive start for Milan Barros up front still just the five goals for him though so far this season this is Davis Milner more rather on his heels as Milner looked to release him It's been the last couple of days dominated by foot injuries. Michael Owens damaged metatarsal, the latest in a long line of uh, top internationals who've had a similar injury. Doesn't look so serious for Milan Barros though, but there's the man who could replace him if required, the Colombian international, Juan Pablo Angel. Hughes. Milner, Watson's touch made it a bit easier for Milner, but Watson able to recover. Just approaching the halfway point of this first half, and it was a lively, fizzy start. It's just become a little bit more stop starty this contest. A little bit more nervy. There's plenty at stake for both these two sides, of course. Albion may well feel that they are looking over their shoulders, and rightly so. Portsmouth picking up under Harry Redknapp and now only a couple of points behind Brian Robson's side. And Villa just looking to use this good run they've had of late to uh, push on and get themselves into mid-table. Just 
One Premiership defeat in eight games now. Although in that time, of course, they suffered the low of Carling Cup defeat against Doncaster. There have been plenty of question marks over David O'Leary, just as there have been over plenty of managers down at the wrong end of the table. Robinson away. Now Carnu to take on Barry. And Carnu gets the benefit of the doubt. Such a difficult player to defend against. And such a difficult decision to give either way as well, Bill, because both players were grabbing one another's shirt. We saw the decision about 10 minutes ago go against Carnu. On this occasion, he wins the free kick. And gives West Brom the opportunity to deliver a ball in the opposing penalty box. Six Albion players in that cluster. Here's Carter. Going to pick out Davis. Backer defended well. And the threat disappears, but it may well be at a cost for the Norwegian, Eric Backer. Well, it's not the first time that he's been the Wars this afternoon. He's been on the end of one or two late challenges. On this occasion, it was an aerial challenge with the young centre half Curtis Davis. Clever work free kick this. They didn't play it in directly, it just gives them the chance to allow Davis to make the run around the back, trying to free himself, but he was well spotted by Backer. And a brave challenge from Backer, and uh, he appears to be OK. Well, the first mission accomplished to some extent for Aston Villa, they managed to Quarten at the moment anyway the Hawthorns crowd Carnu Barry comes across to help out this is greening now his chance early on remains the best opening we've had so far now Robinson, Ellington, and here's Davis, and to thread it for Barosh. Curtis Davis comes across and that's enough to deny Milan Barosh. It's a good early ball that from Davis, the type of ball that Barosh and Luke Moore appreciate, gives them the chance to get under control one against one against their Posing defender, but I'm not quite sure what Bar Barash tried to do that. He actually tried to flick it around Davis and relinquish possession far too easily. He's got a good record of scoring against West Bromwich Albion when he was at Liverpool. Got a couple here in a 6-0 win back in 2003. He also played here in Liverpool's 5-0 win. That was uh, back in December of 2004. He missed a penalty in that game Russell Holt was the man in goal for Albion that day here's camera Watson Greening's made a good run Carnu just halted though by Aaron Hughes it's always a signal that a player wants to get more in the game when he goes into a wide area and that's what Carnu did then starved of uh, good service in the central area so he's gone wide to try and get the ball to his feet. I do feel that West Brom have got to get to him a little bit more often. This is Barros who's set it up all himself. Great work this by Milan Barros. Here's Davis. More in the centre. And that is a bad miss really because the goal was gaping. What an opportunity for Villa. Their best so far. And a real let off for Albion who may well be able to break here through Carnu. Carnu wanted a more adventurous run from Camera. As it is, Camera fancies he has the beating of Barry, he may well be right. Back into Carter! Well, that was a good response from West Brom, but they almost lost the goal at the other end. Barash, spoilt for choice, could have gone right, could have gone left. 
plays it right, it comes back across the goal. Lovely little delivery this from Davis, who knows exactly where Luke Moore is. Gets over it with his left foot, can't keep it down. Keeper Kushat, well beaten, but it crashes against his crossbar. Comes away, but this was a real desperate moment for West Brom. And how lucky are they to survive? Luke Moore should have given Aston Villa the lead. Maybe that'll sting Albion into life. And it's certainly given Villa a boost. They come forward again through McCann. Good movement from Moore, but good defending by the Albion captain, Clement. Albrechtson. I think Cameron's got to do a lot more in that situation. Albrechtson recognises that Gareth Barry has gone tight with him. And there's so much space in behind. Granted, the ball was well over hit. But Cameron's got to come and look to come to feet. Then check and go in behind. Because with his pace, Gareth Barry would not relish that kind of movement. Milner will have their tails up just at the moment. Curtis Davis applying the crucial bit of defending. Centre halves join the party. Back in by Delaney. All hands to the pump for Villa. That was Robinson who clear. Aaron Hughes now. Back up. Milner. And it's all Villa pressure just now. Barry, Melberg, now Milner, Ellington, Cameron unable to keep it in, there's no way out for West Bromwich Albion. And Darren Carter is down as well. Need a little bit of treatment by the look of things, a painful blow to the ankle. And I think that uh, Brian Robson and Nigel Pearson will welcome this little delay. Just takes the heat out of it. Things going a little bit dead because the last three or four minutes, this back four has been under extreme pressure. They've not looked totally convincing and Aston Villa have threatened to take the lead. Barosh, who was the architect of that move, which led to Luke Moore hitting the crossbar. Now Hughes. It's on the way through to Milner. Still Milner! And that wasn't far wide. Well, once Milner gets a hold of this, he's always looking to come across the box, trying to work himself a yard onto his right foot. He really should have been closed down better than this. Albrechtson's got to get closer. I think it's Clements who comes out of the pack. He's got a touch to it, but it was so close to find its way into the back of the net. Kushak, he was beaten, but fortunately for him, just went past the post for a corner. Milner close to applying the killer blow. This time he'll turn provider. Wickedly whipped in ball to the near post. A combination of Robinson and Kushak got it behind. It's an excellent corner. And what an important touch that is from Robinson at the near post. Because the keeper was well beaten. And if Robinson had not got a touch, that would have been a, a goal direct from the corner. It's Milner calling the shots at the moment. This time Kushak did do enough. McCann! Terrific save! Kushak again is the man in the right place at the right time for Albion. Well, West Brom don't get it totally away. It's kept in the box. It's McCann off balance, but he strikes it well with his left foot. On target, and that was destined for the back of the net. And a superb right-handed save from the West Brom keeper to deny Aston Villa yet again the chance to take the lead. And the question is, how much longer can Albion put up with this sort of pressure?
Villa getting closer and closer. Melberg. Barros looking to spin, denied the space. And somehow it's clear. But it's still with Claret and Blue. And there are Claret and Blue bodies down all over the Albion penalty area. Barros is one. And Backer is another by the look of things. Every time a cross comes into the box, you know, West Brom, they don't look convincing. They don't have particularly big headers of the ball in their back four. And they fail to get any distance on the clearance. It's kept in, Barras swivels on it. Well, then it's, it's that Baku who swivels on it before they eventually half get it away. But yet again, another moment where Aston Villa could so easily have taken the lead. Well, it is Eric Backer. How many times has he been in the wars this afternoon? And it's a potted history of his career in one afternoon. But it was desperate defending from West Brom. I don't mind how they clear it as long as they do get something in the way of the uh, attempt on goal. And there were some desperate attempts there by the West Brom players to prevent Aston Villa from getting a free shot on goal. David O'Leary having to patch up his squad anyway. The uh, teenage midfielder Craig Gardner is uh, included among the substitutes for the third successive game and the last thing that uh, he will want is to lose any more personnel the last thing he'd want is to restart the game with just nine players what an advantage this could be for a few seconds for West Brom they've got to get the ball into a forward area well backers back on but Barash he's still limping a little bit on the touchline well, it's 11 against 10 temporarily. Oh, wonderful touches from Carnu. Pam will look for the flick on, but Ellington not quite on his wavelength. I think if you can lip read what Brian is saying, get a hold of it. And that's what Camera should have done there in the penalty box. If he had just got possession of that ball and played it into the space for Ellington, who got away from his marker, that would have been. A goal-scoring opportunity for Nathan Ellington. The walking wounded are back on for Villa. Just about ten minutes left on this first half. The best of the early salvos went to the home side with Green and going close, but recent minutes have been dominated by the visitors. Moore hitting the bar, Milner going close, McCann forcing a wonderful save from Kushak, but still the stalemate is to be broken. Barros doesn't look to be showing any ill effects of his injury. Here's McCann. Moore. Now Greening. Can Albion recover their composure somewhat? Now Brixen. It's comfortable enough for Danaley. Craig a little bit frustrated there with Watson. The easier ball was just to drop it off to his central midfield colleague, Greening. But he tried to turn blindly, not realising that McCann was there and allowed McCann to get in a strong challenge. Barosh first to react, looking for backer, but Watson was up for the fight. Milner now. They're covering back by Diamatsi Camera. That's what his manager will like to see. size 13 and away for Villa's throw Greening camera kept in by Greening and out by Melberg
it's not quite happening is it for West Brom big crowd here they're looking to try and get behind the home team but they haven't given too much to uh, get excited about in this first half without doubt Aston Villa they've been by far the better team the confidence that's coursing through David O'Leary's side is certainly in evidence and particularly in the last 20 minutes or so his only complaint I'm sure will be the fact that the chances they've created haven't been converted Robinson Kanu slip for Robinson camera in the center Good defensive work by Aaron Hughes got a bit lucky here he looks for greening but Barry read it greening It's better from Jonathan Greening. He's now uh, having a little spell over on the right hand side. He's swapped with camera. Delaney seems hungrier than Ellington to reach that spinning ball. Robinson shouldn't have had a chance there, but uh, he is not the sort of player to give up the chase, even though the odds favoured Davis. Davis not enamoured by Robinson's challenge, though. corner kick for the home side how profitable can they make it disappointment at the quality of cameras delivery Drilled for Greening, inch perfect. And a misunderstanding between Albrechtson and Greening. It's Villa who can come forward through Barry. Now Barosh. McCann and Moore await in the centre. Davis. Moore. Milner. Not quite the intended end product, but a neat move by Villa it all started with a mix up from Greening and Albrechtson and Gareth Barry quickly counter attacked it was excellent passing from Villa in the build up but the finish from young Milner really lacked any conviction he was trying to actually curl it with his right foot got it absolutely 100% wrong the goals haven't been flowing recently for, for James Milner. He started off with a little flurry after his lone move from Newcastle. Scored on his debut at home against Spurs and got a couple in that roller coaster Carling Cup tie at Wickham. But since then, there has been a big zero in the goals column for James Milner. Davis, Milner, in for Barosh, well shepherded by Curtis Davis. Well, it was a good covering play that from the young West Brom defender Curtis Davis. I actually thought he went for a throw in, I'm surprised that a corner has been given. Milner's corner. Melberg rose highest, it's loose and it's over. 
Another chance goes a begging. This time it's Delaney. Well, every time the ball comes in the box, they don't seem to get it away. Melbourne puts it back across goal. It comes off Darren Carter. Falls for Delaney. And should the fullback have scored? Probably should have done. Well, that's a good chance. And it probably equals the chance that Luke Moore missed. Luke Moore under less pressure, but Delaney's technique there really let him down. He's not a prolific goal scorer, got one recently, didn't he, for Aston Villa? But certainly could so easily have scored there. Well, that goal he recently got against Everton in the 4 0 win was his first for six years. cheaply again by Albion that's something I'm sure that uh, Brian Robson will be looking to address at half time Barry camera brought him down and it's up to Rob Styles to decide how much intent was in that well certainly Gareth Barry went past him his momentum took him past him I'm not so sure that it was a deliberate foul there, the left hand comes out and he actually falls doesn't he Camera loses balance and as he's falling he actually falls into Gareth Barry and as a result of that Barry goes to the ground Milner went for the blast he gets another chance and Kushak with commanding goalkeeping Kanu Delaney with the block. Now Greening. Watson. This is camera onside. Still Diamanti camera. Locked away by Delaney. It was a good situation for West Bromwich Albion. But camera won't get a second bite at it. Well, he's certainly got himself into some good positions. Watson does well there, wins that aerial challenge, releases camera, clever little dummy. He, he looks up, looking to pick out a player. And to be fair to him, there's too many claret and blue shirts, not enough blue and white striped shirts. Crowd not happy with camera, but he is a threat. Just that when he gets into those positions in the final 20 yards of the pitch, he's got to make them count more often. It's a Villa defence that come into this game with plenty of confidence having the likes of Thierry Henry quiet in their last outing. And it's Albion who will be more pleased to see out this one minute of time added on at the end of this first half and get in with a clean sheet. You're absolutely right there, Bill. David O'Leary, the happy of the two managers. Brian Robson as we leave it there for a second as the first yellow card of the afternoon is brandished right on the stroke of half time a needless one as well well challenged but I was about to say that um, you know normally when your team play as poorly as this you expect to go in half time behind but at least for Brian Robson you can give a team talk with a scoreline absolutely level at nil nil greening a good cross in, Ellington awaits and Barry had to take evasive action. Seconds remain of stoppage time added on. And maybe that will just be a sting in the tail. It's the second corner so far for Albion. And the half 
half-time whistle goes, David O'Leary will be far happier with the opening exchanges here at the Hawthorns in this West Midlands derby, but Luke Moore will be far from happy with the chance that fell his way. He could only blast it against the crossbar in what was the best of a succession of Aston Villa opportunities, particularly in the second half of the first half. Thomas Kushak as well with another fine save, picking up where he left off at Anfield last time out. But no goals in the first half here at the Hawthorns. It's West Bromwich Albion nil, Aston Villa nil. Welcome back to the Hawthorns. No goals in the first half in this West Midlands derby. But Aston Villa will be content that they were well on top. Particularly in the closing stages of the first half. They'll be looking to pick up where they left off. Albion looking for improvement, no doubt, in this second 45. the 11th meeting for Brian Robson as a manager up against Aston Villa he's only beaten them once that was back in 1997 when he was manager of Middlesbrough it's an important 45 minutes for Albion to kick off 2006 in a way that they ended particularly here at the Hawthorns the last calendar year Ellington immediately trying to test Olof Melberg that's the first occasion we've seen the ball being put in behind for Ellington to use his blistering pace. Just felt in the first half that too many balls were going into the feet of Carnu and Ellington. Aston Villa were able to get tight and look rather comfortable. So without doubt, Brian Robson and Nigel Pearson have obviously had a word with his players in the second half. They want the ball out to camera a lot more often to show his pace and also to get it in behind for Ellington. You have to go back to 1985 for the last time that West Bromwich Albion got the better of their local rivals. Carl Valentine with the only goal for Johnny Giles' side. It's a run which uh, Albion are desperate to stop. Robinson. Carter set off on a promising run, which was read by Mark Delaney. Carefully won by Albrechtson, helped on by Watson. Again, Delaney providing the last line of defence. A little slip by Clement, this could let in Barros. Now Luke Moore has Milner alongside him. Milner, in comes Davis, 1-0. Aston Villa didn't have to wait long in this second half to get the goal which their superiority in the first half deserved. Absolutely top class from Davis. Not just the finish, but he starts to move off. Mistake from Clement. Barash onto it. Luke Moore releases. Milner goes past the fullback too easy, but he stands up. A great ball at the far post. Robinson does his best to get across, but it's a free header for Davis. And he makes no mistake. Back to where it's come from across the goal. Kushak. Absolutely no chance. Good header, downward header. Beats Kushak with ease. The first goal that Albion have conceded here since October. Now they have a battle on their hands to maintain this unbeaten record they've had here recently. Camera's shot blocked away. Just the start that Albion didn't want to the second half. It was good play though, wasn't it, for the young Irishman in a deep position. He didn't kick the ball away wildly. It was quite cultured the way he just clipped it over the head of Greening and then played a ball into a forward area. But you have to say that Clement should have dealt with it much better. It was rather careless, lost possession. And Barash was quickly onto it. And certainly Villa capitalised on that mistake and deservedly take the lead. 
And you look back over the fixtures when these two met last season and it was Villa who took the lead in both. Both finished 1-1 with Albion coming back into it. They'll need to do the same here. That's good work by Cameron and he's won a free kick for his troubles. It'll probably be a yellow card against Gareth Barry. Once again, Cameron showing his pace. He had got away from Barry. There was no contest between the two of them. They are good resistance. Good determination from Camera. You see the hand, the left hand of Barry going around the waist of Camera. And he knew that it was a free kick. A suspension will now follow for Gareth Barry. It's the Villa fans in fine voice at the Hawthorns at the moment. Albion looking for a good response to going behind. It's Carter's free kick away by Gareth Barry. His ever-present run in the side will come to an end. Suspension bites next week. McCann got beyond Robinson first time, but not second. McCann Albion making a little bit of a meal of it. But once again, it's not convincing defending from West Brom. Robinson had the opportunity with the as the ball bounced of heading it away for a throw in. When he gets possession here, he carelessly gives it away, gives the ball back to McCann, who wins the free kick after a clumsy challenge from Jonathan Greening. The whole afternoon so far, the home side have struggled to deal with set pieces into their penalty area. Milner again asking questions, Moore got the header. He felt he should have got the corner as well. Well, Albrechtson gets much tighter this time on Luke Moore. Just does enough. That's better from West Brom. Wasn't a free header from Luke Moore. Greening. Pressurised by the goal scorer. We mentioned already Albion's good home form, but Villa haven't been slouches away from home themselves. They're unbeaten in their last four trips away, but three of those have ended in draws. We determined that uh, the same outcome won't happen here. They're in the driving seat at the moment. Carter. his touch makes life easy for Hughes this time Clement more assured than he was in the move that led to Villa's opening goal now Curtis Davis camera Curtis Davis has made a good run forward an important block that was by Melberg once and twice and has he hurt himself in clearing the danger? Watson will get a yellow card. Well, the way that Melberg went to ground, it suggests that he was caught by Watson. Good interception there from the experienced defender. He was always favourite Melberg to win this ball. It is a late challenge from Watson. Just caught Melberg on the top of the boot. The third yellow card we've had so far this afternoon and the first that has gone the way of West Bromwich Albion. Darren Carter, he's found camera. Now the Dane Albrechtson, Ellington. The return of Melbourne for Villa could not really have been more timely. Here's Ellington, 
long range effort without the stinging power required to really test Stuart Taylor who hasn't had an altogether uncomfortable afternoon so far it has to be said challenge that we saw Steve Watson and Olaf Melberg and Watson went into the book I think it's Watson who's actually come off worse Bill because he's definitely limping it's worth keeping your eye on that he's not moving comfortably and the former Villa man be able to last the course you wonder if it stays like this whether change will be in the offing before too long anyway for Albion this hasn't been their day so far they've been unable to really get going or reproduce the form that they have done in recent home games where they saw off Manchester City and Spurs both in impressive style here's Barosh camera second best against Barry Davis Milner. This is Arik Backer. It's brought out by Darren Carter. Barry appears to have the measure of camera at the moment, not allowing this Senegalese international any time on the ball when it's played up to him. There's not enough variation in his play, that's the problem. It becomes too easy to mark. He doesn't quite use his pace. Always to the best of the team on that occasion there he was coming deeper and deeper and quite clearly he doesn't relish the ball at his feet he wants to have the ball played in behind where he's in progression Carnot both he and Diamancy Camera may well be off soon for international duty on in the African Cup of Nations to leave uh, gaps for West Bromwich Albion Greening. Now Clement. A chase for camera. That's the type of ball that I'm on about for camera. When he's got something to get on the end of. Albion sitting on uh, 19 points so far this campaign a couple ahead of Portsmouth down in the drop zone below them and 16 of those points have come at home if the home form starts to rattle with inconsistency then I just sense it could be a long few months ahead for West Bromwich Albion let's not forget though they are just one goal behind but they will need to start troubling this man a little bit more Stuart Taylor will certainly be troubling that man, Brian Robson. a little bit too tight on Carnu. that's what the big man wants wants to feel the player then he tries to roll him movement on the Villa bench I wonder if a change is imminent for them before too long it's Albertson's free kick for Albion one by Watson and it's gone to Luke Moore now James Milner Great run forward by Davis. Milner in for Barros. Davis there as well. 
Here's Luke Moore. Barros on side. Now comes Kushak. Nothing's quite going right for Albion at the moment. The interception from Delaney. The challenge from Kanu, not a foul one, despite the protestations of the travelling Villa support. That challenge from Delaney on Carnu typifies Aston Villa's approach all afternoon compared to West Brom. Much more decisive, more urg urgency, much sharper in possession, and also when not in possession. Greening. Switched over to that right-hand side with camera coming to the left to try and create something. And Gell's introduction is imminent. A few last-minute instructions from Roy Aitken. We'll have to wait till Greening delivers this free kick. It's a deep delivery. Carnu, the intended target. Here's Curtis Davis. Carter. Camera. Now Carnu. Lovely drag by Carnu, and still he goes. Delaney's challenge was a clumsy one. And he's got away with it. Let's have Villa on that occasion. Clement now, corner kick, that's better for West Brom, excellent play from Carnu, could so easily have won a penalty here, he wants to get in the penalty box, lovely skill here, and he's waiting to see an outstretched foot, Barry stoops to clear, Barosh, and here comes the Aston Villa change, well, they wanted to make it, but Robinson very quick to take the throw in. So David O'Leary will have to wait a little bit longer to make his switch. Watson Rosewell. And a little bit of a mix-up. Carnu could be the beneficiary. And Villa very nearly gifting their hosts a passage back into the game. Barosh ran into Robinson. Or did Robinson run into Barosh? It'll be interesting to see how Rob Stars interprets it. He's obviously given a free kick, so he saw it that Robinson fouled Barosh. But it appears that he's going to give no more than a free kick. The Villa bench aren't happy. Certainly Barosh wasn't too pleased either. Well, they're talking to, to the West Bromwich Albion left-back, but nothing more. Doesn't look like we will see the fourth yellow card here, but what we are about to see is the first substitution of the afternoon. This is the initial challenge that uh, Barrash wasn't too pleased about. I think a little ankle tap from Robinson. Nothing much there. He's done that all his career, Robinson. Barrash probably not aware of it. But the second challenge obviously was deliberate. Otherwise, Mr. Styles would not have given a free kick to Aston Villa. Well, Eric Backer, who had a stormy first half in terms of picking up knocks and injuries. Uncertain whether this is tactical or whether Baca has an injury, but either way, his afternoon is over. And Juan Pablo Angel is the man who will come on. Now Barash continues to make his case to Rob Styles. Floated in by Hughes. And Gell the target, and he will add an extra little bit of aerial option to Villa's strike force. In terms of tactics, it looks like uh, Stephen Davis has gone into the centre with Luke Moore occupying a berth wide on the right of midfield for Villa. He's greening on the right for Albion. That's better! Well, he almost gets lucky here because I can't believe that he's trying to sort of beat Taylor at the far post. It's a useful cross, and Taylor makes sure that it doesn't drop in at the back post. 
Capital will be on the bar. Camera's corner. Villa suddenly looking a little bit brittle at the back. Back in by Greening. Camera. Tried for the chest when perhaps the head might have been a better option. But it's still with the home side. Watson. Nice touch for Camera. Still Diamantzi Camera waiting for that gap. Carnu tried to bring it down. Barros defends from the front but not effectively so. Suddenly Albion raising their game a little to just bring Villa out of the comfort zone which they've occupied since taking the lead early on in the second half. More decisions for Rob Styles to make. His bodies lie on the ground, it's Nathan Ellington who wins the free kick this time. Well, the crowd have finally found their voices. And that's a strong indication that West Brom are starting to play a little bit better. In by Carter, Watson unmarked. But he was quickly closed down by Aaron Hughes and Albion. Their reward for that particular passage of play is a corner. Disappointed in that, well worked free kick. Watson lost his man, free header that should have gone back into the danger area. Curtis Davis, and then he glanced it backwards though. Here's Greening. And nearly able to bulldoze his way through. Berg swings his boot to clear. And now Villa look for the counter. In towards Parrosh, that's how he likes it played, but he didn't control it as he would have liked. <coughs> now a chase for Camera and for Kanu as well. Rob Stiles feels there's no cause for a free kick. Maybe cause for more here, it's Camera. Back for Carter, Carnu left it, now did that hit a hand? Rob Stiles says no. Carnu decided to leave it. Well Carnu does, he leaves it. Oh, it's clearly a handball, wasn't intentional. Depends on the interpretation of the referee. He saw that, it's not intentional. And Aaron Hughes gets away with it. This is Albion's best passage of play so far this afternoon. And Taylor able to save from camera. Suddenly the Hawthorns is a very different place. The derby has come alive. Well, was this a penalty? He looks at it, he's looking straight, directly at it, Rob Styles. motions that it wasn't intentional. Absolutely no dispute whether it is on, that was quite clear. Albrechtson. Gareth Barry. to each other, Curtis Davis was more decisive, McCann, Melberg commanding in the air, Curtis Davis, Once again, no reaction from the West Brom player. Kanu, what is he, six foot four? You've got to expect him to win the ball in the air. Ellington, he was stood on his heels, he never reacted at all. Milner. Now Angel. 
Davis makes a run, Angel looks wider for Luke Moore, back in towards Barros. Albion clear. Now Milner. Milner far in! And inches wide from James Milner. Lovely little step over this from Milner. Gets himself that yard onto his right foot. Hits it low and hard. Just needs a touch. Keeper can't react. How close was that? Really positive play that from Milner. Camera now. He sees a gap. And a little bit of a striker's challenge from Luke Moore. His reward will be a yellow card. Carter looking for Watson. Angel is detailed to prevent Watson getting the ball into the danger area, and he did as much. Curtis Davis. Now Watson. And Greening couldn't keep it in. I think Greening might have been expecting Curtis Davis to take a touch. And he was a little bit slow to set off. Another Albion free kick. Albion can find a way back into this match it will be their 12th defeat of the season only the sides below them and around them have uh, fared as badly Hello. Curtis Davis it's cleared by Melberg Watson look for the volley they get another chance but McCann ensured he didn't on by McCann Albrechtson now here's Carnu. Darren Carter turned back into congestion it's Carnu who's able to work his way out of it Greening now and turned behind by Aaron Hughes once again a wonderful covering position taken up by Aaron Hughes Carnu releases Greening and just look at the position of Hughes I think he denies Camera a goal. Brilliant defensive position he took up. Carter's corner. Everybody missed it. Milner looks long. It's Robinson. Clement. McCann comes away with it though for Villa. Here's the goal scorer Davis. And on two challenges. Now Barros and Angel. Back for Davis. Just too intricate in the end from Aston Villa who were trying to pass the ball into the back of the net. Carno certainly appeared to have a hand on his shoulder from Delaney. Here's Barros though. Albrechtson not allowing away beyond but a little bit of a misunderstanding between goalkeeper and defender and it looked like Barros may well have had a case for that being a corner once again unconvincing defender from West Brom Albrecht Sonny's waiting for the keeper Kushat to come he's not sure whether it's his ball Barros puts him under real pressure well, Barros has got a case hasn't he certainly should have been a corner
Stephen Davis's goal, which separates the sides now, takes him out in front as Villa's top scorer with six this season. stolen and found Luke Moore here comes Robinson Carnu lovely first touch tried to release camera but was just off balance as he went to do so Greening Back for Greening. McCann's challenge deemed to be foul on Darren Carter, so another free kick, and they've had plenty of these in the second half. Within 10 15 yards of the Albion penalty area. It's Greening's free kick. Taylor's come a long way. Again, Hughes is the saviour. Watson! 1-1. Steve Watson scores against his former club. And West Bromwich Albion are back on track. Well, the initial ball in from Greening. It was certainly aimed for Watson. He does well, Watson. Shows a lot of bravery. Should Taylor have come... If he is, he's got to get distance on it, he doesn't get anything on it. The ball falls to Watson, and that's absolutely brilliant technique. He gets over the ball, great body shape, smashes it through the legs of Luke Moore into the back of the net. The goal has certainly been coming. Sheer delight for West Bromwich Albion. And for Brian Robson, and for Steve Watson, his first goal for Albion, and his first for two and a half years. Here's Greening. And it was so comfortable for Villa for a while, for most of the first half, for the opening period of this second half, but it's been a terrific response from the home side who battled and battled and eventually got their reward and David O'Leary's unbeaten run over Christmas is now under threat I don't know if the backer substitution bill was tactical or whether he was injured but certainly the game has changed since then Greening won the challenge but didn't really win the battle in that Villa have come away with it as the sun comes out over the Hawthorne so there's a new ray of hope for West Bromwich Albion in this match. It's been a much more entertaining second half, much more like the Derby Fair that the faithful would have expected here. The first top flight outing of 2006. It's anyone's game now, but the momentum is with West Bromwich Albion. Robinson's run was used as a decoy by camera. Here's the goal scorer, Watson. And Carnu. Ellington. Robinson. Robinson's cross. Taylor again comes. Just about got enough on that though. It's difficult with the sun in his eyes. Yes, he wasn't sure of his angles, was he? He could actually have left that ball, but he wasn't sure of himself. Now it falls to Villa to come forward, Angel alongside Barros, the front pair battle away, here's Luke Moore, Robinson dives in, and he could be in real trouble here Paul Robinson, just a yellow. Well, he certainly dives in whether he made contact, 
obviously Rob Styles thought so but it's a good response from Aston Villa just over 11 minutes remaining on this derby it's Gareth Barry who went for the quick one and a handball a penalty kick for Aston Villa it was taken quickly it caught Albion by surprise but Rob Stiles convinced he saw an offence in that and he's given Aston Villa a penalty kick and I think that Rob Stiles is absolutely right Gareth Barry very alert he was trying to put the ball on the opposite side from where Kushak was and Watson he definitely makes movement with his arm to prevent the ball from going past him one minute the hero next minute the villain and it's Milan Barros it's 2-1 to Aston Villa Derby delight for Villa and for Milan Barros they're back in front Well, sometimes you wonder if it'd be better for Kubas just to stand and not make a movement if Kuzak had stayed central then it would have been the easiest of penalty saves but Barash he's got the goal Villa back in front the last time that Aston Villa won here at the Hawthorns was back in 1987 Warren Aspinall scored twice for Villa that day well it's Barros and Davis who look to have done the job for them today just about 10 minutes remaining for Albion to come from behind again well, there's no doubt in my mind that Watson's arm it comes up he knows exactly what he's doing. That ball was destined for the far post where they would have gone in. Your guess is as good as mine. But I think Rob Styles didn't give a penalty early on for handball. Could so easily have given a penalty for West Brom. On this occasion, he was obviously absolutely certain and he pointed to the spot immediately. A decisive factor, perhaps, that he sensed that Steve Watson had a chance to get his arm out of the way if he wanted to. Here's Kanu. Camera. Villa players buzzing around with a new enthusiasm now. That the second goal has given them. Kanu breezes beyond more, but straight into the challenge of McCann. Brian Robson ready to make a change as well. Jeff Horsfield. Another former Birmingham City player is uh, ready to come on. Ellington let's not forget where the free kick came from too Bill it was a rash challenge wasn't it from Paul Robinson on Luke Moore the captain is withdrawn another striker is put on Albion know the importance of this game in the grand scheme of things in by Robinson Melberg is now. Well, it was brave, brave defending from the Aston Villa captain, and uh, he certainly put his body on the line. And looks like he's paying the price. <laughs> Only just back into action after four games out. It's his first match of the festive period. Always going to come off worse there, isn't he? He's going away. The ball's going away, but Melberg only saw one thing, and that was getting his head on the ball. He actually collided with Jonathan Greening. But he seems to be okay. So far, the 
Local derbies haven't gone too badly this season for Aston Villa. They ended Birmingham's dominance of the second City derby earlier on this campaign with a 1-0 win and uh, they're on course for another three points in the backyard of one of their neighbours. Davis. This is Camera. Barry made sure. Carnu. Milner to clear. Well, he wasn't allowed to by Greening, but uh, I'm sure Villa will settle for a goal kick. Meantime, another change for David O'Leary. Luke Moore will make way for a former teammate in the Youth Cup winning side of 2004, the young midfielder Craig Gardner. The local lad, another product of the academy at Villa. It's only his second Premiership appearance. Made his debut as a substitute in the win against Everton. His first taste of a local derby. Here is Gardner. Miguel's made the run. Robinson ensured the ball didn't reach him. Here's Barosh now. Davis. Gardner. Angel! Should have been three. I can't believe the amount of space Angel finds himself in. Angles up from Albrechtson. He's claiming Angel was offside. You're right, Bill. He should have scored. He didn't realise he had that much time. I'm sure if he did, he would have had an extra touch. Had a wonderful scoring season uh, a couple of years ago. But has only got two for Villa so far this campaign. Juan Pablo Angel. Like so many of the Villa players, a campaign that's been punctuated by injury. this season only Birmingham City have come to the Hawthorns and won just over three minutes plus whatever time is added on for stoppages at the end will Albion to prevent themselves falling to league defeat number two here in front of their home fans here's Barry not impressed by appeals for handball on that occasion Delaney took responsibility Barry took his eye off the ball Carnu. his camera Carter oh Carter so close to a real spectacular again. Wonderful attempt this from Carter. The option of greening in a wide area. With seconds remaining, he wanted to go alone. Curls it with his left foot. Keeper, he just has to watch in hope that it goes over the bar. And that's what it did. Brian Robson looks to the old guard to provide salvation. Kevin Campbell comes on for the closing minutes here. Nathan Addington, who's had a frustrating afternoon, really, makes way. Here is Campbell. There's plenty of strikers on there at the moment for Albion. Campbell, Carnu, Horsfield and Diamancy Camerall playing in advanced roles.
all about penalty decisions and the way that Rob Styles interpreted them. He felt that Watson's handball was one that he intended, whereas the one for Villa when Aaron Hughes handballed inside the penalty area was unintentional. That will certainly provide one of the dominant talking points after this fixture. This is where West Brom's equaliser came from, Bill. Free kick from Green in. They normally search for Watson at the back post. And they do it again. This time Curtis Davis with the touch. On by McCann. And Milner. Barosh. Here's Davis. Back for Milner. Open up an avenue for himself and found Barosh. Certainly carried a threat all afternoon. Aston Villa going forward. Milner just looking to keep possession. Darren Carter goes to ground, quickly capitalizes on it. Milner plays it to Barosh. The ball's running across him. And all Barosh needed to do there was just hit the target, but his shot went rather wayward. And he's not too concerned at the moment. It's Aston Villa look as if they've got the game won three more minutes for Villa to hold on well, here's camera Important touch from Aaron Hughes, he's had a splendid afternoon. Well, I was at Villa Park last year when Robinson got a last second goal to win a point for Albion. Will he do it again today? Camera looks deep, back in by Watson, away by Delaney. That point against Villa back in April proves so important in that running and having the ultimate survival of Albion in the Premiership unless they can magic something late on it's going to be an empty start to the new year for Brian Robson Albrechtson's cross sails behind though unbeaten in his last four games at home the West Bromwich Albion manager hadn't conceded since October when Newcastle United came here and won. Carter. Robinson looks for Campbell. Away by Melberg. In the last minute of time added on. That was good play, wasn't it, from Gareth Barry? Just took the heat out of it. Realised there was not a West Brom player near him. Fainted as if he was going to kick it up the field and just let the ball roll out for a goal kick. Good, clever, experienced play. And that should be about it. Coming into today's match, and only one, one of their last six. There have been plenty of draws, peppering a recent good run. Might just get better for Villa here. Here's Davis. Barros carried too far. Back for Davis. And there's Robinson to clear the lines. That's a terrific chance there for Villa to put some icing on the cake a perfect start to 2006 for David O'Leary and Aston Villa and it's been a pretty good Christmas time for the side in Claret and Blue, but a 
mixed afternoon for Steve Watson. Looked like he was going to be the hero when he rifled in his first goal for the club to get Albion back on level terms, but then a handball and the resulting penalty kick, which proved decisive, given by Rob Stiles and converted by Milan Barros, ensured that Aston Villa take the spoils in the West Midlands derby. The first home defeat for Albion in five. Stephen Davis as well with a great start to the new year. Villa looking up, but Albion look nervously behind them as they clash to a defeat here by two goals to one.